Hello folks, in this video we're going to take a look at the new edit scope features introduced into Gaffer 57. Uh, and to do that we're going to take a look at how we can fix up this uh, silly scene we have here which has a has a couple of problems. So first of all uh, we have these cows that have been instanced and aimed away from from the robot and they've got a little bit of random variation applied to them but this creates a few problems as you can see here some of them are intersecting the legs and some of the others are overlapping on top of each other so it'd be great to fix these up so uh, what we'll see though is if we if we select these if we try and use any of the transform tools we can't directly edit them because their positions are being controlled by the the random distribution so there's no way to store our new transforms so if we have a look in our graph what we probably end up doing normally here in previous versions of Gaffer, spending quite a lot of time making a whole bunch of transform nodes and path filters. Uh, this is kind of really a bit of a time consuming and painful process. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just work in the viewer, grab the things and edit them however we wanted? Gaffer could make the nodes for us, but uh, it doesn't really know where to put them. So this is where edit scopes come in. And the idea of edit scopes is they're a bit like a box. So I'm going to make one here, drop it in my graph, and I'm going to call it layout fixes. And what you'll see now is we've got a, a new node. It looks a bit like a box node, but it's got this little cog and it's blue. This is the convention we're using for edit scopes to help distinguish them. If we go back to our viewer now, uh, and we look in this new piece of UI up here in the, uh, the top right, you can see we can pick our layout fixes uh, edit scope from the menu and suddenly now all of these uh, these cows become editable so I can grab this one I can move him off to the side perhaps this one wants to come forward a bit it's inside of there this one now this is a new shortcut if you hold down control and press delete you can prune things so we can quickly use that to get rid of um, Get rid of these ones that are doubled up. Maybe this one needs to come over here a little bit. Maybe we can move this one out and create a little uh, a little more variant variation in their uh, arrangement to make things a little bit more interesting. So as you can see, we're working fairly freely here without having to worry about what's happening. But what has been going on in the node graph? So if we go inside of our edit scope, you can see that Gaffer has created two things for us. We've got a transform edits and a pruning edits. So what are these? Um, in Gaffer 55 we introduced the spreadsheet node which is a great way of uh, saving duplication of nodes when you need more than one doing a similar function. So what we've actually created here is a transform spreadsheet and we've automatically been adding rows for each location that we moved and we have uh, a pruning edits, which is actually just a prune node with the path filter attached. We've been adding all the paths for the things we've been deleted into here. So this is kind of really the idea of uh, the edit scope is that the various tools that will work with them. So in this case, we're, we're initially supporting all of the transform tools here in the viewer and the new prune uh, control delete shortcut. They create these well understood nodes that you're used to in the graph. So we look at our transform edits we can work as if we would created it ourselves you can turn off individual rows you can see the cow by the leg there is changing this is going to change our reoriented one here or you could disable the whole node to uh, see what the effects have been made there or you can disable the whole edit scope just like a normal a normal box an area where edit scopes can really come into their own is for making uh, specific tweaks uh, further down in a graph. So in this example, we're going to look at a, uh, a little branch here we've got for shot 110 and make some shot specific overrides. So because you can have as many edit scopes as you like anywhere in your graph, I'm going to create another one here. And so it's placed in our shot specific branch and I'm going to call this shot 10 tweaks. And now any changes we made with this scope active will only happen in this this branch. So we're, current, we're currently viewing through here. So if we take a look at uh, through our shot camera, uh, you can see now we've got the choice of our layout fixes and our shot specific tweaks. The, the, the higher they are up in the menu, the higher up they are in the graph. So the first one in the graph is this one and then we get to that one. So I'm just going to pick our shot tweaks uh, and I'm going to just nudge this, this light back in. Let, let's imagine it's just protruding a bit much. We just want to tuck it back in a little bit there for this one shot because of the camera angle 
uh, and maybe this one needs to be a little bit higher it's backlight that's filling in here or it needs to be a little bit larger just so it tucks in there I could also uh, make some a few positional tweaks to better suit the camera angle here maybe this fellow wants to have a little look around here and see what's going on who knows so I've now affected some shot specific changes uh, there's nothing to stop me if we've noticed some main sort of like layout fixes we want to change from this angle but have them propagate to all shots because I've now chosen the layout one any changes I'm making are happening back up at the uh, the, the top level again uh, so you can quickly move between shot specific work or shared work and just choose at which point you want to express your edits we have a quick look at the graph. You'll see now if we disable our shot tweaks, the uh, the light changes and the orientation changes of those two cows are coming and going, but the changes of layout we made back here are still being applied because they were affected uh, up here in the, uh, in the layout scope. Looking inside again here, you'll see we've got a familiar transform edit spreadsheet that's been created with just the tweaks that we made. So you can quite easily see what has been changed in any specific place. Uh, a quick convenient way to get to these things as well is through this little jump arrow so whilst you're in your viewer if you press on here you can see it allows you to quickly get to uh, the uh, the controls for any of the uh, edit processes that were made so in the layout tweaks so or if we go to our shot one you can quickly open this sheet so you can see if you want to you could keep that around whilst you're working so we could go back to here and we could nudge this one forward a little bit he's already got some value so you can see that one's being edited if we pick this one here, well, it's hard to get to, let's go for that one. You can see we've created a new row and that's being edited there. So uh, hopefully that makes sense as a quick introduction to edit scopes and how we're trying to improve uh, the immediacy of affecting your changes in Gaffer. There's lots more to come yet. Keep your eyes posted on the HUD designs, which uh, will allow you to make light tweaks to shader parameters from a nice overlay display. They're going to be edit scope aware too. So you'll be able to work in a similar way with those. Um,